Oklahoma consistently ranks near the bottom of states in health rankings, a situation that may get worse before it gets better, as the state agency that oversees the Medicaid program is bracing for funding cuts that could well reach into the hundreds of millions of dollars. Somewhere inside the state capitol, negotiations are underway on a new budget, a spending plan that will once again include budget cuts for state agencies. Among those facing a cutback this year is the Oklahoma Health Care Authority. But the impact from even a flatlined budget will involve more than $100 million in lost income and have economic repercussions statewide. Physicians and hospitals and pharmacists and nursing homes and everybody in the health care sector, you know, we're buying services out there, durable medical equipment all across the state. Nico Gomez is the CEO of the Oklahoma Health Care Authority. He began crunching his budget numbers and preparing for cutbacks in services and payments to health care providers after it appeared a cutback from the state was likely. If we were cut 5% over what we received last year, uh, we're looking at a, a hole of uh, over $103 million uh, just in provider rate cuts alone. And that's a rate cut of about 12 to 14.5%. And that's a worst case scenario. The best they can expect right now is a budget that is flatlined. And then we're still looking at provider rate cuts in the neighborhood of, you know, six and a half to eight percent. That's already on top of some targeted program cuts we're going to go ahead and, and, and try to implement in July 1. And that is only part of the impact. The agency has already lost $50 million in federal funding because our economy improved, $13.6 million more from reduced tobacco sales, and any additional cut in state funds impacts federal matching money. Now, when we're talking about uh, cutting state dollars, we're also losing uh, the federal matching dollars. So while we're trying to save you know, 100 to $150 million out of the program, uh, you know, depending on how we do that, we could end up losing a total of 400 to $450 million out of the economy. David Whitaker is president and CEO of Norman Regional Health System. He is working up a budget for his facilities right now, projecting a possible cut in Medicaid funding of 2.5%. It's about $2.6 million reduction in payments to us, not charges, but actually reimbursements uh, to the hospital. As things play out uh, at the Capitol, we'll start making adjustments uh, to our budget in terms of growth areas. I uh, think two areas that come to my mind immediately is a lot of our community wellness programs that we offer up. Those are cutbacks to preventative health care programs, which are much more inexpensive than a hospital visit. There's no such thing as an easy cut anymore. Uh, we're, we're the, the low hanging fruit have all been picked and now we're, you know, we're, we're, we're into the bark of the tree, so to speak. The second area that Whitaker says would be immediately impacted by state budget cuts is physician recruitment. The state is woefully short of primary care physicians, and that's been a real focus of our physician recruitment efforts over the past couple of years, and that, that's a potential area where we might see cuts having to come across. Oklahoma currently ranks 49th nationwide in the number of primary care physicians per capita. And just to be average, the state needs 1,361 more doctors, especially in rural areas. More cuts in Medicaid reimbursement rates would mean even more doctors refusing to take Medicaid patients or see new ones, which further limits access to health care. Uh, Medicaid's a difficult enough challenge as it is. There's probably less than five physicians in Cleveland County, Cleveland County, that will take a new Medicaid patient now. And that means visits to the emergency room will increase, something that ensures higher health care costs for everyone. Yes, and right now, 22% of our payments for ER services are attributable to Medicaid beneficiaries that we take care of. Dr. Don Wilbur is a pediatrician who has been delivering babies and taking care of children in Oklahoma for the last 34 years. As an advocate for children, Dr. Wilbur says an underfunded Medicaid system will have a major impact on health care access for kids. And the only people that will see them, and we've had this happen, is, is Medicaid mills that open during the day with uh, ancillary workers and they see the patients, but they're not available at night, so the patient has to go to the emergency room, seek care in the emergency room, which is much more expensive and much less effective. 
Add to that a growing number of Oklahoma doctors that are looking at the current situation and deciding it's time to go fishing. As they have more things required of them and more difficulties, they're more willing to say, you know, I just don't need to have that requirement on me. I think I'll go ahead and consider retiring early. And for others, it may mean a change in how they practice their profession. Going to work in a different way, like uh, an hourly work or uh, work for an insurance company or work for a health department or, you know, or potentially leave the state and go someplace else. There are more than 820,000 people on Medicaid in Oklahoma. Two-thirds are children. Many others are elderly. And there are more than 38,000 new Medicaid clients in just the last six months. We pay for 77% of the nursing home beds in the state. Uh, we pay for uh, about 65% of uh, deliveries, pregnancy, pregnancies in the state. Um, I'm concerned about rural Oklahoma and, and, and making sure that we have adequate coverage there. With a projected shortfall of at least $188 million for next year's state budget, for those on Medicaid, cutbacks become an issue of government making health care decisions for them based strictly upon funding. It comes down to money, the amount of money that, that, that the state can get into the, into the Medicaid program. And what a lot of people don't understand is, is Medicaid is a federal matching program. So for every dollar that the state of Oklahoma puts in, the federal government comes back with a $2 match. I mean, I can't think of a way that you're going to fix a system like this with cheerleaders. I mean, with people coming out saying, rah, rah, you know, we really want to be good. I mean, that helps, but I really think that, as with most things, the way you fix it is setting it as a financial priority and doing it. An announcement on a budget agreement from negotiators at the state capitol is only days away. And as in past years, some agencies will be cut more than others. But no other cut would impact as many people across the state as taking millions out of Medicaid.